Join Kids Hat Family. Hey, Tia. You know my friend Jim, who is a year senior in school? Yes, I do. I think he's being very bossy these days. Really? What happened? Well, he thinks that our math teacher will give us a surprise test towards the end of the month. Why does he think so? Because she gave his class a surprise test too around the same time of the year. Okay, so what's the problem? It's a surprise test, dear. How can he know when she will give it? And he keeps telling me to study for it. Well, he's advising you from his experience. Let me tell you a story to help you understand. The musical donkey. Once upon a time, a potter had a donkey. The potter was very poor, so he didn't have enough to feed the donkey. Hence, the donkey was very thin. One night, the donkey was hungry even after his dinner. So he wandered in search of food and reached a nearby field and ate the crops. This went on for a few nights. Till one night, he met a jackal. Hello there. Hello. Is the crop here any good? Yes, it is. Besides, it is a lot more than what my owner gives me, so I can't complain. Would you like to have some cucumbers? Yes, yes, I would love to. I love cool juicy cucumbers. Okay, come. Follow me then, my friend. The jackal took the donkey to a nearby field that had cucumbers growing in it. And they both ate their tummy full. From that night, the donkey and the jackal met every night and enjoyed the delicious cucumbers in the field. One night, after a hearty meal, the donkey said he wanted to sing. I feel like singing tonight. No, 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 my friend. You must not sing. But the donkey ignored the jackal's wise advice and started singing. Hearing a donkey bray in the field alerted the farmers. They came rushing to the field with their sticks. The wise jackal knew what would happen next and jumped over the fence for his safety. But the donkey kept singing till the farmers found him. Once they did, they beat him up and chased him out of there. So you see Tofu? Sometimes a wise advice is not to be ignored. Otherwise you will get chased out of a field or fail a maths test. <laughs> yes Tofu, you are right. I think I owe Jim an apology and need to start studying. I agree. Hi 
Hi Tofu, who was that? That is Lily. She is my new friend. She has an aquarium in her house and her brother has the latest robots collection and I want to see it. So I told her that I love fish and she invited me home to play with her. Since when do you like fish, Tofu? I don't. They creep me out. I just said it to her so that she would be friends with me and let me see her brother's robot collection. You're the donkey with the lion skin. What kind of donkey is that, dear? The Donkey in the Lion's Skin One day, a donkey found a lion's skin. Oh, look at that! It's the lion's skin! Let me put it on. He put it on and looked at his reflection in the river. Wow! I look just like a lion. No one can say that it is me. I must take advantage of this. The donkey wore the skin and marched into the village. Obviously, seeing a lion in the village, the villagers got scared and started running helter-skelter. They left their stores and kiosks open. The women dropped baskets full of hay and fruits on the road, grabbed their children and locked themselves indoors. This is so much fun! The villagers have left their food and belongings out here in the open for me to feast on. The donkey ate as much as he wanted to. Grabbed his loot and went back into the jungle. few days, he relaxed and enjoyed what he had brought from the village. When his supply ran out, wearing the lion skin, he walked into the village once again. The villagers once again ran at the sight of the lion. The donkey gathered his loot. This went on for many days. Every time he was successful, the donkey's confidence grew. We must do something about this lion. What can we do? Let us follow him and see where he goes. And so the villagers decided to follow what they thought was the lion.
The donkey was particularly happy that day after plundering the village. Still wearing the lion skin, he went straight to the wheat fields and started singing loudly. The villagers who were behind him recognized his brain. It is not a lion. It is a donkey braying in a lion's skin. I say we teach him a lesson. The villagers caught hold of the donkey and beat him mercilessly. So you see, Tofu, it is not enough to pretend to be what you are. One must genuinely be what they say they are. Otherwise, their true nature will start showing and people will recognize their lie. I agree with you, Tia. I will go and tell Lily the truth. Tofu, what are you up to? Uh, nothing much. Just watching TV. Oh, cool. Are you done with your homework already? Uh, we didn't have much homework today. We just have a research assignment. Hmm, I'm impressed. So you finished your research work so soon? Oh, no, I haven't. It's a big assignment, so we have to do it in pairs. My partner is Kate. She's really good with research, so I passed it all off to her. She will write the paper and bring it tomorrow. I don't know what to say, Tofu. You can say which game you want to play. How about I tell you a story instead? Oh, I love your stories. Please tell me one. This one is about the horse and the donkey, where the horse doesn't bother to help the donkey. Once upon a time, there was a poor washerman. All he had was a donkey and a horse. <laughs> he would use the donkey to carry the load of clothes from the village to the river and back. while he would use the horse for himself to go wherever he needed to. The horse enjoyed an easy life, carrying only his master, while the poor donkey did all the hard work. One day, the washerman went to the village to collect clothes from people. Hello, are there any clothes you want to give for washing today? 
Yes, yes, I have. Thank you. Hello, how are you today? I am good, thank you. Do you have any clothes for washing? Yes, I am glad you came. We have too many guests today and excess laundry too. Don't worry, I will have them back in time. Thank you. And so the washerman went from door to door collecting clothes for washing. Then he loaded everything onto his donkey. We have a big job in front of us today. We have more clothes to wash than every other day. We'll have to hurry up. As soon as he got the donkey loaded up, they started moving towards the river. The washerman decided to walk besides the horse and the donkey. But the load was too much for the donkey to carry, so he got very tired. When they were halfway through to the river, the washerman decided to stop to get some rest. He too was tired, having walked all the way instead of riding the horse as usual. That's when the donkey decided to talk to the horse. Horse, can you please help me? This load is too heavy to carry. Since the master is walking today, and you have no burden to carry. Can you take some of mine? I am here to serve my master, not you. It's not my job to carry the load. It's yours and you alone must do it. The donkey had no choice but to carry the burden of the clothes all alone. So he continued walking slowly when they resumed their journey. But after some time, the weight became too much for him and he collapsed. He tried to get up again but just couldn't. Oh no! What's wrong with my donkey? Let me get his weight off him first. The caring washerman removed the bags and bundles of clothes from the donkey. Oh, these bags are very, very heavy. It was wrong of me to put them on the donkey alone. Now he is very tired. He will not be able to carry this burden anymore. I will put everything on the horse. Saying so, he put all the bags and bundles on the back of the horse. Let's give the donkey some rest today. They started walking again towards the river. As they walked, the horse realized what a mistake he had made. This is so heavy. I wish I had not been so selfish earlier. If I had shared the donkey's load when he asked me to, I wouldn't have to carry all this by myself. From now on, I will always share the burden.
So you see, Tofu, it's always more sensible to share the burden than to not help others. Yes, I agree with you, Tia. In fact, if I help Kate out, we will be able to finish the work faster as well, and both will be free soon. That's right, Tofu. So you see, sharing the burden of work has many advantages. You must go and help Kate out. What is the matter, Tofu? I wanted to be the class leader, dear. But I didn't win the poetry contest last week. And today, I accidentally dropped the fish bowl and it broke. My teacher had to put the class fish into plastic bags and take them home. Oh, yes. I'm sure I won't become the class leader now. I'm sure no one in class likes me now. Hmm, I understand why you feel like that, Tofu. But don't lose hope. Even the worst situations can lead to something nice. I don't think that can ever happen, Tia. Well, it happened to the musicians of Bremen. Musicians of Bremen? What happened to them? Musicians of Bremen Once upon a time, a man had a donkey. When the donkey grew old and sick, the man decided to kill him and sell his skin. The donkey understood his master's plans and ran away and took the road to Bremen. I will go to Bremen and become a musician. On his way, he saw an old dog lying in the grass. Dog, what are you doing here? I have become so old. I cannot gather the sheep for my master like I used to. So my master beats me. Why don't you come with me to Bremen? We will become musicians there. The dog agreed and the two new friends continued their journey. In some time, they came upon a cat sitting by the road. Looking like the skies were about to come down on him. Cat, what's wrong with you? Why do you look so sullen? It is my mistress. I have grown old and cannot chase the mice like I used to. So she has planned to get rid of me by drowning me in the river. Oh, that's not nice. I have an idea. The donkey and I are going to Bremen to become musicians. Why don't you join us? You can sing a jolly tune too. The cat liked the idea very much and made his escape with his two new friends. They had only walked a while when they came upon a cock. He was singing without a stop. Cock, what is wrong with you? This is not the hour for you to sing. 
Well, my mistress is having a big dinner party over, and she has instructed the cook to cook me for a soup. My head will be cut off this evening, so I am singing till my neck and throat are intact. Is that it? We all are going to Bremen to become musicians. Why don't you come with us? After all, you already know beats and tunes. And so the party set forth on their journey to Bremen, which was still very far. As night fell, they felt tired and hungry. We must find a spot to eat and rest for the night. Everybody agreed, and they decided to look for a place to spend the night. In some time, they came upon a lonely house. Its lights were lit. and they could hear the sounds of a gathering from inside the cat climbed up a tree and peeped in from an open window It is a gang of robbers and they have delicious spread of meats and drinks before them. I could use a couple of bones with some meat right now. And I could with something to drink. My throat is parched. Let us find a way to drive the robbers away. The four friends huddled together and at last came up with a plan to drive the robbers away the donkey put his front feet on the ledge of the window and the dog climbed over his back the cat climbed on the dog and the cock flew on the top of the cat's head once they were ready they all performed their music together The donkey brayed. The dog barked. The cat mewed. And the cock cockadoodled. The music was so loud that the windows of the house shook and threatened to come down upon the robbers. The robbers were scared by these unimaginable sounds and quickly flee from the house. As soon as they were gone, the four musicians took over the dining table and fed themselves full. Once they were done, they switched off the lights and went to sleep. I will sleep on the straw. I will sleep by the door. I will sleep upon the hearth by the warmth of the fireplace. I will sleep on this beam of the house. Soon they all fell asleep. A little away from the house, the robbers watched as the lights of the house went off. We shouldn't have been scared like this. One of you go back in and tell us what is going on inside the house. And so one of the men made his way back into the house. The house was so dark and quiet 
that he went to the kitchen to strike a light. But he mistook the cat's shiny eyes for coal and put a burning match to them. Shocked by the attack, the cat jumped on the robber and scratched his face. This scarred the robber and he ran towards the back of the door to find a way out of the house. But in the dark, he accidentally stepped on the dog that bit his leg. All the commotion woke the cock and he came flying down to land on the robber's head and cried, cock a doodle doo cock a doodle doo Ultimately, the donkey kicked him out of the house with his hind legs. The robber ran to the rest of the gang. Chief, the house is haunted. An evil witch lives there. She scratched my face. At the door stands a man with a knife. He cut my leg. In the backyard is a monster that hit me with a club. And on the roof sits a judge who screamed, Bring the knave up, do! Hearing this, the robbers got on their horses and left the house forever. But everything went so well for the four musicians that they decided to live in that house forever. And never made it to Bremen. So you see Tofu, even when you think that nothing is working out, all you have to do is keep trying and things will turn around. Thanks dear. I always feel so much better after talking to you. You're always welcome, Tofu. For your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Hat family. Subscribe here.